Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and I hope I'm, I know I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is the most monumental, the most important Blender tutorial ever made. It might even be the most important mo moment of your life. Um, I guess I should talk about what this tutorial is about. Um, here's some footage that I filmed of a uh, blue ball. Um, notice that it's the only blue object in the shot, and what we're going to be doing with this is... And you can see I've kind of added a transition here. The effect we're doing is taking this footage and kind of desaturating everything except for, you know, our target object or more realistically our, um, you know, our target color. And that's why I call this the color isolation effect. Sorry for this weird intro, but um, yeah, that's what we're going to be making. It's actually super easy to do in Blender and we don't need to do any weird stuff with the 3D viewport. So uh, once you open up Blender, here's how we're going to do it. Go to the compositing workspace because, you know, we're just taking our footage and altering it, compositing it. Enable use nodes. We're not using the render layers node instead. Like we talked about, we're going to be using our footage or image or image sequence, anything you want to isolate a color with. So I'm just going to add an image node for that and connect this. And for this image, which again, you can up, you can you can put footage in this. It doesn't have to be an image is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to import in from my mess of a desktop. Uh, base footage, which is what I called it. And you're going to notice that we're not actually seeing anything, even though, you know, we imported it, imported it in, and it's in the composite node. Uh, you have to add a viewer, a viewer node to see it. So add a viewer node and connect it. So now we can see what's going on. By the way, V, Alt V to zoom in and out. Or if you have node wrangler, control shift click. Okay, cool. So now we have our footage imported and we're almost ready to do the effect, but we have to do a bit more uh, maintenance uh, before we get there. First of all, you're going to notice that even though this is footage, our timeline, it's not, you know, it's not updating. It's like it's, it's as if it's frozen on the first frame and it's not as if it is. It is frozen on the first frame. So to have this movie, it already recognized it as a movie. Uh, to have this movie use all our frames, we just need to say, don't just use one frame, use, I don't know, 200, 300, depends on how long your shot is. And then you see, as we scroll through here, it's going to actually uh, play back until we get to frame 200 where it's going to freeze. Or if your uh, footage is shorter than 200 frames, it's going to freeze on the last frame. Okay, cool. And then one last thing for the observant among you, uh, you are going to notice that my skin looks like vampire skin. It's like super pale, super white, and this is not, you know... You know, the, the, I, I tan, right? This is not what I look like. Um, it's Blender uh, manipulating the footage, the color space to look like this. So to fix that, go to Render Tab, Color Management, and Enable Standard. So by default, it's Filmic, which is good for, you know, uh, rendering stuff that you make in 3D. But if you want to keep the same color space that you entered with, Standard is what you want to be using. Okay, cool. So now the question is, you know, we've done all the setup. We've gone through the madness. How do we isolate this blue? Or, you know, alternatively, how do we isolate this orange or the white or whatever? Well, to do this, we're just going to add a hue correct node and put that, you know, in between our footage and the viewer. So just hue correct node. And you're going to notice that this node has three options. Hue, saturation, value. That is, that's what H, S, and V stand for, not for Hubert, Sally, and Victor. Hue, sat. <laughs> What is this tutorial? Either way, uh, you're wanting, you're going to want to keep this on saturation because the theory of isolating a color is we want to keep this uh, blue saturated and everything else we just want to desaturate, right? That's the idea. So that's why we want to keep it on saturation. And I bet you can already guess what we're going to do with this node. Well, you're, you see we have the whole spectrum here and we want to kind of isolate or conserve this blue and the dark blue, this teal and the dark blue. So with everything else, we are just going to take it and bring it down. And you're going to notice parts of our image will start uh, becoming desaturated. So I'm just going to kind of bring down, you see the fingers are still a bit red uh, because clearly we haven't uh, done our isolation yet. We still need to get rid of this uh, hue, maybe a bit of this one. And you really just want to kind of play around with this until you feel like you've isolated the target color. For example, I don't think we have any green in this shot, so it's not an issue. But ideally, I don't think we have that much green. Maybe part of this blue is kind of tinted green, but um, there you go. So basically, uh, we've taken our hue correct node on saturation and kind of made a distribution where it's highest. It's highest where we want to keep the color and lowest otherwise. And the nice thing about this is it kind of happens to our whole footage, not just the frame. So we can play through this and it just kind of works. And uh, as you might expect, we can even take this and bring it even higher 
to make it even more saturated. Of course, it's going to start looking ridiculous if you really want the color to pop out, you see. And here's what it looked like before. So this is more like uh, what it looks like normally. And just so you can see, see a bit of a difference, I'm going to uh, mix these two together. So our original and our manipulated. And uh, this is what the original looks like. This is what the manipulated looks like. So it's really as if we just desaturated. It's exactly as if we desaturated everything else. We didn't like bump the saturation or anything. So that, that's pretty much how you do the effect, but uh, there are some things you're gonna need to consider. For example, uh, this shot is super convenient in that the only color uh, that I want, blue, uh, only has one object uh, with that property, right? Uh, there's no blue object in the corner, there's no sky up top, uh, but let's say that was the case. Let's say there were multiple blue sources, but you, you want to isolate blue, but only the ball. So the sky, you still want to desaturate. How do you do that? Well, um, we can't uh, use only this node anymore because this lets us just isolate a color and it would keep all the sources of blue, right? How do we pick only one? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to desaturate it again using a different method. So hue, saturation, value node. And I'm just going to connect this and let's view it. So right now, you know, it's taking our footage and putting it through this node that I haven't done anything to. So it just kind of looks like our footage. And I'm going to take the saturation and just bring it down. Okay, cool. So now we have a desaturated version everywhere and a um, other version that keeps only blue. Again, imagine that there's other blue objects or the sky or something. So only blue, don't think ball, just only blue and fully desaturated. De uh, okay, cool. Now we just kind of have to mix these together. So we're going to use an alpha over, although you could also use a mix node. So alpha over, and we're just going to connect these two. So again, uh, only blue desaturated alpha over. And right now it's going to show the desaturated since that is in the foreground. And I'm actually just going to reverse this so that our blue only is in the foreground. And then all we have to do is add a factor or a mask. Pretty simple. So we're going to add something like a box mask. Although, whoops, you do not want to connect that. Although you can use something like a um, ellipse mask or a custom mask. You're going to plug this in. And then you see that it does our blue isolation, but only where uh, this mask exists. So we're kind of making it doubly exclusive. So I can make that wider and then kind of reposition it, <laughs> you know, not, not by too much. And we just want to make that a bit wider. And there you go. Now we've kind of isolated the blue only in this area. And to kind of, uh, kind of explain more what I mean, I'm just going to reset this curve. So here we have the saturated one. Here we have the desaturated one outside this box. But if instead we isolate uh, something that has, uh, you know, a color that has multiple objects with that color, so kind of reddish orangish, which looks like this, it kind of maintains the uh, skin and the uh, floor, but not the ball since it's only blue. So this is kind of like a inverse isolation. So uh, if we isolate this and then look through this, we've now kind of isolated the skin, not perfectly since, you know, a, bo a box mask isn't what you want to be using for this. You want to draw a custom mask that kind of outlines your skin or, you know, alternatively, we could isolate only the floor. But really, it's just theory at this point. You know, we're not going to be doing the mask. So hopefully you understood uh, you know, understood me through this madness about color isolation. It's pretty simple and most effective when you have a single object with that color because it makes it super easy. You saw it was only one hue correct node. But uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this free tutorial. If you did, the best way to support this channel of free tutorials is by donating over to my Patreon. I appreciate anybody who is willing to do that and has the means to do that. Um, you, do, you do get benefits, but you know, whatever. If you want to do that, uh, you can go check out my Patreon. Other than that, hope you enjoyed my free tutorial. And uh, that's the show. That's it.